So I just want to talk about a couple of things, um, some of the articles that are coming out today about me thinking that Trump didn't mean to incite the riots. I think it's cute that that's the little takeaway that Complex gets from that. And um, especially with our relationship over the last 10 years, obviously completely disregarded and the other bigger magazines, that goes for you as well. I th I get it. I have something to say and I don't just show up giggling and talking about my hair and my makeup. I was asked directly political questions for over 40 minutes by the BBC Radio 1. And I answered them, you know, and I said, when someone is so deeply deficient in empathy, they may not know that they're the bad guy. And that may be a controversial opinion, but don't make the controversy that the controversy that I don't think that he meant to incite a riot. It's it's not the point is what I was saying. The general point is the wider ranging issue of sociopathy and narcissism that's being reflected in our government to right back to us. And what we've seen in our in in the pandemic is the second ep epidemic. And I, I I talked about this for ten minutes. And I I said I said to Annie Mac, this is the takeaway for me. We've seen violence within the household increase. 300 fold throughout every county of America. 911 calls going up 300% because of issues of delusions of grandeur between one partner or another and the, and 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 the violence that stems from that and the chaos. So that's the important issue. That's the takeaway and uh, that's what I said in my interview. So I really don't appreciate being painted as some like white Republican who has always been given everything, you know, and supports the insight of a capital riot. I I freaking grew up struggling, working my ass off. We had nothing, period, no matter what the story is. And I said in one of my very few interviews with Mojo Magazine like a couple nights ago, the, the real story, what I've told people, is a lot more beautiful than this myth. It's like 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 that notorious side, that polarizing side. I don't get it. I personally don't get it. Um, you know, I just think because sometimes of the way I look, it's easy to paint this picture, but man, did I struggle to become the genuine singer songwriter that I am. And I want to say that people do not last a long time in my workplace. They don't, um, you know, it's fun to like tear people down. But it really discourages them from, you know, moving on to their next project. But thank God, I already know what I'm doing and I'm not going anywhere. So I just want to remind, you know, magazines like Complex or bigger platforms like Tone Deaf and things like that, uh, that it is actually important to talk about inclusivity if people bring it up. So I address it. Um, I could stay quiet, but why? To let you write my story all over again? No. This is my story. I'm telling it. I've told it through my music. Hasn't all been pretty and easy, but, um, you know, I'm the wrong person to come for when it comes to, you know, not being inclusive or liberal. <laughs> not that I, like, you know, ever focused on either one. I always just focused on the music. But if people want to make it political, I'm down. But listen to the entirety of the 40-minute interview. So, you know, I don't want to have to focus on this, but it is what it is. Uh, I'd love to get to the point one day where we just talk about the music. But until that day... I want you to know my story. I don't want you to know what people write about and take. I want. I don't want you to know that those five words that people took out of a four-minute interview, forty-minute interview, is what is what the takeaway is. Because I have my finger on the pulse, and I'm watching the news, and I'm I'm gathering up all the information, the same as everybody else, and I was deeply concerned about the storming of the Capitol, so fuck you. <laughs>